think that's it? Amen. Well, good evening, good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Praise God. Um, this is Bishop Siggers. Welcome to our studio in the beautiful city of Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Uh, we're so glad that you're able to join us on tonight. Tonight is our Wednesday night Bible study. Amen. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about the unity of the faith. According to Numbers 11 and 25. Amen. Hallelujah. We want you to know, amen, that you are blessed of God. And listen, um, those who are coming that's not a part of this ministry, you can join us every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock at 1505 East 260th Street in the beautiful city of Euclid, Ohio. We're inside of the Imani building. Amen. It'll be wonderful, amen, to see you. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. As always, we're, we're here with you. I got Pastor Elaine here. Amen. Say hey, honey. Hi, amen. She's ringing her bell, y'all. She's ready to ring her bell. Hallelujah. For those who have never um, come out and been a part of our Bible study, we ask questions. And at the end of asking our questions, uh, we have a question and answer time. Amen. So, but I like for everybody to know. So when I hit something, I'm going to ask at the end. You will hear a bell ring. So you make sure to note that question. Amen. So God bless you. We're going to pray. And we'll begin our study for tonight in the unity of the faith. So Father, we thank you. We honor you. We bless you for this day. We pray, Father, that you will bless us tonight as we look at your word. Give us wisdom. Give us understanding. We invite the Holy Spirit to be in the midst of us. Not my words, Lord God, but let your words, not my will, but let your will be done. And we'll thank you for it. And we'll honor you this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We get my music off here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So we're talking about the unity of the faith the unity of the faith amen and we're going to be taking our scripture lesson text from um, uh, numbers the 11th uh, chapter and the 25th verse amen and i'm just pulling it up so i can just read it to you uh, it's, it's inside of our scripture text or our lesson plan but i wanted to give you the uh, scripture so you have it in fact I'll go ahead and print it as well not print it but I'll post it amen and it says this it says and the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the 70 elders and it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them they prophesied and did not cease now, this person they're talking about him was Moses. Amen. Um, his father-in-law gave him some very wise um, counsel when he said that it's not good for you, Moses, to take on all of this work. These people, it's going to wear you down. It's going to wear you out. So he said, just pick out among you um, those who are faithful and give them a part of the work amen and let them work it with you amen let me just put this here so i gave you the scripture it's um numbers um can't see that <laughs> 11 and 25 so i posted it down in the um, comments there so you have that amen hallelujah did you see it okay uh, the most or the single most damaging tool of the enemy or he has in his arsenal uh, against the church of Jesus Christ is the spirit of confusion and distraction. I say that again. The most damaging tool in the enemy's arsenal against the church of Jesus Christ it's the spirit of confusion and distraction. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
And the reason why I said that, and there's he has other tools that he used against us, but these are some these are some very powerful tools against us. And the reason why is because in the background, when we got confusion and distraction, we'll miss what the enemy is doing to destroy us. Okay? But in the background, also in the foreground, we'll miss what God's doing to bless us. So that's the reason why confusion and distraction, it, it makes us lose our focus. Amen. It makes us lose our focus. And when we lose our focus, I say it again, in the background, we'll miss what the enemy is doing to destroy us. And in the foreground, we'll miss what God's doing to bless us. An example of that would be when Elijah missed what God had done by destroying the 400 prophets of Baal. Amen. And as we, we read that, we find that uh, um, uh, the prophets of Baal, which was Jezebel's prophets, amen, were destroyed by the fire of God. When, when God came down, he sent this fire and destroyed the altars and burnt them up, amen, and honored the men of God, Elijah, amen, and, and he caused all of the 400 prophets to be, to be executed, amen, because they didn't serve the living God, amen. So, but because of this, when Jezebel found out that her men were destroyed, she sent word to Elijah that this time tomorrow, you're going to be dead. Okay, I'm taking you out of here. Amen. And when Elijah got the word, Elijah got to running. Amen. And he ran and he ran and he ran for a whole day. He ran. And the Bible says that after the next day, uh, he, he start complaining and said, Lord, I'm the only one left. But, but the thing that caught my attention in, the, in that was that he ran, and it says, and the following day, so the 24 hours, amen, following day, he began to talk. But watch this. He didn't realize because he was so confused and he was so distracted that he had already ran past the deadline of Jezebel's threats. Wow. So although he was still scared and running, he didn't realize that God has already blessed and delivered him. Mm -hmm. It had been a full 24 hours and he was still alive. Amen. Wow. And sometime if we don't if we, we don't be careful, we can allow the same kind of mindset of distraction and confusion to cause us to miss what God is was is doing or want to do in your life because you you've lost your focus I, I want you to know that it's important that we keep our focus and we'll talk about that a little bit more I just want to kind of give you that see uh, what is confusion let's just look at the word F confusion is a lack of understanding or having uncertainty the next thing confusion is is confusion is a state of being bewildered or unclear in one's mind about something. See, we can't afford, amen, as the people of God to be bewildered or to be unclear about what God has said to us or what he has called us to. We cannot be in a position where we lack understanding or we, we are uncertain that God has heard our prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. See, now we look at the word distraction. Distraction is a thing that prevents someone from, from getting full attention to something else. It's a thing that presents someone or prevents, I'm sorry, to that prevents someone from giving full attention to something else. So when you're distracted, it, it, distraction causes you to lose your attention from what you should be paying attention to, to something else. It's almost like when you're driving a car and you're sitting up there calling people on the phone. Sometimes you can be good and, 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 and you think that you got it all together. I know sometimes I've, I've been even guilty of that. My wife would say, what are you doing? She'll grab the phone. Give me that phone. You're driving. You can't do that. 
But you know, we get comfortable, and but we can be easily distracted if we don't really pay attention. Amen. So, so uh, when we're being distraction distracted, we take our attention away. See, just for one moment, you can look down and look back up, and and it's over. In one moment. Also, distraction is the extreme agitation of mind or emotion. It's the extreme agitation of mind or emotion. We allow things to agitate us. We allow people to agitate us. Or if you allow people to, to, to stir up your emotion, to push your buttons, amen, it will cause you to be distracted. It will cause you to be confused. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to let nobody, amen, stir up my emotions, amen. I'm not going to let anybody um, agitate, amen, my mind or my thinking, amen, because it's important that we stay focused and stay clear of mind. How else are you going to hear the Lord? I like what Jesus did when Jesus, he, he did miracles and did things. Instead of talking about what he did, every time he said, I need to go and be by myself. I need to go and reassess and talk to my father and spend time with him. Because if I start spending time with you while you're telling me how great I am, I can lose my focus on the, the job or the task that is before me. So it's important that we keep our focus, that we don't, amen, uh, cause ourselves to be lack of understanding or be bewildered, bewildered or unclear in our minds about any one thing, amen, because you can be clear. You have to know what God has said to you and trust that thing and believe it. I, I remember someone asked me about something that they saw on the Internet about giving and asked me, uh, what I thought about it and about what they said, amen. And um, I <laughs> and and do and do I think what do I? They said what do I think about it, or how come we don't do the thing? We're doing the things that they're talking about as if we're doing something wrong based on someone else's opinion. So, but uh, I just told them number one, I'm very clear about what I have heard from God. And what I've seen God do in the area of giving. I understand it and I'm conveying what I've not only saw and understood, but what I've seen and know for myself. I know that it works. Amen. But see, sometimes people get up and they tell you things and then you're buying into that another voice, but you're not connected to the voices, the, the voice that's speaking into your life. Amen. Therefore, I'm as a person and, and you as a person we can't allow ourselves to debate with people about something or someone else that someone else has said on the internet or uh, or listen if you're going to do something let my work speak for me you know because a lot of times we, we're looking at and we're listening to all these things and there's a lot of voices out there Amen. And people will rather listen to something that sounds good in their ears other than get the training, getting the teaching, getting the understanding from the voice that God has placed in your life. That's why he raised up leaders. He raised up leaders and then he attached you to those leaders or cause your hearts to be knitted. So now God can begin to feed you personally. Why? How? You know, what kind of sense does it make to have um, a baby? And then you have a stranger that don't know nothing about that baby, but that stranger is feeding you food that you're thinking that is good food, but it's coming from a stranger. You don't know if it's good or not. Now, I'm not saying that what we hear and different things isn't good. It could be something good for you personally, but you still need to seek things out. Seek the truth out. Don't begin to turn against the leader because of what somebody else said, because they got a good, strong, clear, and, and charismatic way of putting it. Listen, you better understand what God has said to you and stand on that. Case in point, Mary, amen, was with Jesus at a wedding. Glory to God. And when they were at the wedding, they ran out of wine. When they ran out of wine, the first thing Mary did was went to Jesus. <laughs> and, and Jesus looked at her and said, well, what you coming to me for? What do I have to do with this, med this, this wedding? But Mary spoke 
what she wanted and she just walked away you don't see anywhere else where they had any other communication but he responded to her, maybe not in the way she expected, but he said, what do I have to do with you? But she understood that when he responded that he heard her. And the most important thing is that she knew that he heard her. And that's all she needed to know, that he heard her. And then she went to the servants and said, whatever he says do, just do it. Why? Because she heard and although she don't know what he's going to do, but she know that he heard her heart. And sometime when we pray, we got to believe that God has heard us. Yeah. Now, the situation may not change right away. Amen. But I want you to know if you continue to hold on to him and believe that God will do what he said he would do. And he has heard your voice. What you worrying about? What you crying about? Amen. Let's just trust in him and see that he will answer prayers. Amen. So Mary, she believed because she heard. And what voice are you listening to? Amen. See, um, it's, we're the ones, amen, the leaders, we're the ones that make the house calls. Amen. We're the ones that pray and intercede for your soul. We're the ones that have your best interest at heart. Amen. And instruction and teaching in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And living a transparent life before you and before you and God. Amen. We're the ones. I'm talking about leaders, those who are um, pastors, those are those who are over people. Amen. Man, I'm not just I'm not just talking about myself, but I said leaders because some of you are leaders, but we are the ones you call when things get out of hand. So stop taking a second hand or third uh, party uh, um, belief on things when you already have a leader that can help you to be what you need to be. Wow. Amen. Therefore, the Lord has connected our hearts. Now you gotta understand that is that's big. You may not feel like it, but he connects heart. He, he does it for a purpose. I'm, I'm about to tell you in a moment. But he connects our heart as one with what? One vision and one spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. To the end that we may bring him glory. glory. Bring who glory? Yeah. Not me glory. Not you glory. But he connects us together that we can combine our strength together. Yeah. That we can bind our Holy Ghost together. Yeah. That we can bind our hearts and minds together. That in the end we might bring him glory. Yes, Lord. <clears throat> now I hear these people in there saying things. And I just wanted to soak in. You know, and I'm not talking about uh, we all must because I, I don't want to get in a debate with people. People say things. I just tell them what I believe and I let it go. I don't argue with people because uh, my leader told me years ago, he said, listen, don't ever allow anyone else's confusion to become your confusion. Amen. So if they're confused, they're going to just have to kind of like figure it out. Hey, but if I know the truth, I'm going to stand on the truth. You know, so um, we must be in, in, in anything. And if you're listening to people and you're, you're hearing stuff, make sure you listen to the teaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. See, that's where all things level. You know, all the other things are, are good. But if you are a faith teacher and you're a believer of the gospel of Jesus Christ and you're walking in that and him crucified, amen, you may come. Amen. To a place and an understanding and a wisdom of the unity of the faith. Because, see, that's what I want. I want the unity of the faith. I ain't trying to get some money. I ain't trying to get some prestige. I don't want everybody to know my name and have my names in light. Amen. Because I'm making light of what this person is doing wrong or what that person is doing wrong. Why are you looking at what other people are doing? What are you doing? Amen. I got too much. I got. I spend too much time trying to keep myself together. I don't have time to worry about what other people are doing, but what I see and when it when I'm confronted, because see, Jesus didn't chase down the Pharisees. He didn't chase down the, say, the naysayers. He didn't chase down those that didn't care or they were speaking wrongly against him. No, he never did that. Yeah. But when they confronted him, he corrected them. 
And they came by way of questions, amen, and they tried to throw him off and, and different things. But he always had an answer to the point. He shut him down so bad, they said from that point on, they ain't asked him no more questions. And that's how we need to walk. We don't have to chase down people and other, you know, other ministries and other pastors. And I see people, they just attack each other. And I'm not going to do that. Now, you may not agree with me. I mean, you have a right to not agree, but I'm just not going to get into that. And I think it will be wise if you didn't either. Amen. But let, but we're going to walk in the truth. And if someone confront you or someone comes with a question about something, we'll have a word in our spirit of the faith and the hope that's within us. Amen. 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 So I'm not trying to prove anyone wrong. I ain't trying to prove nobody right. I point them to the scriptures and let the word judge. Because the word is a judge. Amen. Now, it's important that we take the scripture and rightly divide the scripture, though. Because, see, sometimes you can point to the scripture something that um, you'll take one part of it and you'll take it out of content. Right. You know? Like I hear somebody say, and I may get trouble for saying, get in trouble for saying this. Oh, women shouldn't speak in the church. Men, women ministries, and men, women this. And then they take it from a scripture where it told them when uh, Paul said that, but they don't understand the whole contextualization of that scripture. They didn't. They isogenically took a part out, and they build a whole religion on it. See, when they came to the temple, the women and the children were always in the back. They brought all the men to the front. Amen. And then if there's a lot of men, the women couldn't really hear. They didn't have mics and speakers and stuff, so they couldn't hear. So they asked their husband, oh, what did he just say? And, and then he would turn around, oh, he said this, that, and the other. And then the other one asked, well, what did, you know, they're trying to hear. And then he said, let the women be quiet. Okay, now, but we've taken that and say, oh, women don't supposed to say nothing in the church. They don't supposed to do nothing. Now, I don't want to go into that because that's the place people want to debate. I'm just telling you what the, the, the context of the scripture was and what they were talking about. It wasn't necessarily talking about women don't supposed to talk and, and speak and stuff like that. You know, but we can take little things. And that's what I'm saying about um, confusion and distraction. Whether somebody speak or not, who, who cares? In, in Joel 2, it says, and in the last days, I'm going to pour my spirit out on all flesh. all flesh. You know, the sons and daughters, it specifically right. says, sons and daughters shall what? Prophesy, dream dreams, and see, vision. come on. So I don't get caught up in that, and we don't have to. But when we just take the scripture in, in the context that it should be and not take it out of context, and then we won't allow ourselves to get confused, amen, or distracted. Right. Amen. And when we do that, amen, we can come into the unity of, of the faith that in John 7, 38, it says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers, rivers. of living water. Amen. Amen. So that's my prologue, if you will. So to get into really the lesson, I had to kind of set a foundation here. But in getting to what I want to really talk about, um, the objective of the lesson or what I want to talk about is that it is imperative that we have the same spirit and anointing of the leader in the congregation. Now, I'm talking to some leaders that's listening. I'm talking to some other pastors. I'm talking to some bishops, and I'm helping people to understand, amen, and I'm talking to the congregation. Respect your leaders. Respect those who God has placed over you because you know that they answer for your soul, and in the last day they're going to have to give an account for you. So it says it's important or it's imperative that we have the same spirit and anointing of the leader, which brings us to our scripture text again, where the Lord came down in the, in the cloud and he spake unto Moses and, and took the spirit that was on Moses and put it on the 70. It, it was a reason he because he wanted them to work uh, um, cohesively together as one. Amen. That's how God works. He don't he, he doesn't work in division. When Jesus was here, when Jesus was on this earth, Jesus said this. He said, I only do what my father said. 
I don't, I'm not seeking my own, but I do what the Father has spoken and showed me. And what he has showed me, that's what I do. Because there's unity. He didn't do anything that the Father hadn't already placed in his heart and mind to do. Amen. Amen. So here's our first bell. Ready, honey? Mm -hmm. It is vitally important... That the church has the vision and spirit of the set man or leader. Amen. In the church. And that's, you can find that in Proverbs 29 and 18. And it says this. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Either you are part of the collective or you are on the outside looking in. Amen. That's my that's my quote behind that scripture. So so where there's no vision of people perish and see uh, the Lord gives vision and we have to make sure that we're we're embracing the vision because when you begin to embrace vision, amen, you set yourself up with destiny because every leader, amen, or every strong leader will change destinies for good. Amen. Jesus said, come unto me. And although you have been hurt by others, you don't have to stay there. Right. That's why he sent you leaders to help you to strengthen your faith, to strengthen your resolve. Amen. And I know there's a lot of people, especially in churches that are just hurt. But, it's, but we got to get past that. You know, and I don't I don't allow people to come to me and tell me how this person hurt them or that person. No. Well, because you don't know the whole story. You don't know what the person did. And be careful how people come and tell you about this that, and the other. You don't know if you weren't there. People can tell you anything. Amen. But all that does is distract you and confuse you. So now you're looking at me with one eye open and the other eye closed. You know, because of some crazy stuff somebody else has said that may or may not even be true. And for the most time, it's not true. See, but see, some people think that things don't apply to them. And they think they can just do what they want and say what they want, but you can't. Amen. Because you're going to have to answer to the words that you say. That's why I'm very careful and I, I try to be as careful and we try to be as careful as we can uh, with what we say because what we say carries weight. Mm -hmm. Amen. As a leader, it carries weight. And I'm, oh, I'm going too slow. I need to move on on. Amen. Some people think that they are the exception to the rule. And we can't, and then watch this. It's not for us to say that they think that. Or they apply the things don't apply to them, but they just have to do that for themselves. So if you see that and you sense it, what do we do? We pray. Amen. In Psalms 31 and 23, it says, The Lord preserve the faithful and plentifully reward the proud doers. Amen. Those that do it well. God, he blesses them. He's, he's faithful and plenty, plenteously. Amen. Bless those. Amen. That doeth well. Amen. Those who don't think that they, they, they got a special uh, road that they walk that nobody else can walk down. And those who will humble themselves. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. And and even uh, it, it says that her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. Why? Because she has honored him for who he is. And sometimes I'm blessed because of my wife. Amen. And because of how she entreats. And as we entreat one another, it blesses all of us. She's blessed and I get blessed. Amen. And that's what it's, it's, it's about blessing each other as much as we can uh, to be a strength and a heart and a mind and a, just an a, 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 a arm for one another in a time when it's evil. Because the days are evil and sometimes we need a helping hand. We need to have hear a word of encouragement. Amen. When we, we down, we need to somebody to pray and show that they are appreciative for who we are as a people and not be so stuck on themselves. When the last time you just spent some time with somebody else? I ain't talking about somebody who's close to you. I'm not talking about family members. I'm just talking about somebody just that may not have anyone else 
to have someone to care for them. When the last time you just went out of your way? When the last time I went out of my way to do something for someone else? That, that's what we need to be thinking. That's what we need to, uh, so that we can come to the unity of the faith. And we're talking about that tonight. We're talking about coming into the unity of the faith. That we think the same thing, we speak the same thing, and we do the same thing. See, many Christians fail to obtain their inheritance because they fail to lock into the supportive and be supportive, if you will, with the vision that the Lord has given the shepherd, which is not the shepherd's vision, but it's God's vision. I'm very careful. I listen to what people say. And when people always say, oh, your church or your this, or your, those people are the ones they're not connected to the uh, vision. They're, they're di disconnecting by choice from the vision because it's not the leader's church. I know when I was with my pastor for years and when I talk and I made mention of the church, I say my church. These my these your people, these mine too. This work is my work too. I always said, this is my church. Mm -hmm. And I took pride in that. And nobody better not do nothing crazy because I get them together. Why? Because I had a vested interest. And if we're going to see the unity of the faith, we're going to have to have a vested interest in one another. Mm -hmm. You and me, me and you, mm -hmm. we're a team and we work together. Mm -hmm. And God is pleased. Amen. God has given his people all things through Jesus Christ. All things. So we ain't got to worry about stuff. As you find that in Romans 8, 32, 1 Corinthians 3, 21 through 23, and 2 Peter 1 and 3, Romans 8 and 32. Amen. It says, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Amen. Second Peter 1 and 3. According to the divine power which given unto us all things that prevaileth unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. Praise be to God. So I'm going to give you a couple definitions. Uh, uh, what oneness is number one. What, what is oneness? Oneness is... is the fact or state of being unified or whole comprised of two or more parts. The fact or state of being one in number. The very fact that it talks about two or more parts means that you can't just have oneness just being alone. You understand what I'm saying? Um, you can't just have oneness saying that Okay, I'm an island by myself, because that's the kind of mindset that that produces. Amen. But what you can only have one is when you're in agreement with someone else. Amen. What is faithfulness? The other definition, faithfulness, steadfast in, afflex, in, in, in affliction. I'm sorry. Steadfast in affection or allegiance, firm in adherence to promise or in observance of duty as a faithful soldier you know Paul said I fought a good faith fought a good fight I kept the faith amen and now I got a reward coming and I want you to know that there's a reward for all of us but there's a reward for good and there's a reward for the wicked make no mistake about it there is going to be a reward Amen. But what is it that we're doing? And see, we got to make sure that we're watching and we're, we're, we're praying and we're trusting God. And I, I pray and I, I hold you up and I want you to know that God has blessings for you. And not so much of stuff. Well, see, when we hear blessing, we think, oh, I'm about to get some more money. Oh, I'm about to get a better car. Oh, I'm about to get a wife. Oh, I'm about to get a husband. I ain't talking about that. Just having peace of mind is a blessing. Just having uh, your, your family around you and having love, amen, and having some place to go where you can be, amen, be yourself, amen, and, and, and not be allowed and not allowing the outside influences to, to take you away, amen, but just being steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that our labor is not in vain. You labor not looking for anything in return, but you labor because you love him 
and you know that he got your back and you know like i was talking up to you in the beginning that he hears you when you pray amen next bell that i'm going to read ring whenever you submit and support the shepherd's vision a supernatural anointing is released to take the vision wherever God wants you to go. I served my leader for over 20 something, 23, 24 years. You know, and I, when I served, I served to the point where I think about doing nothing but serving him. And I wasn't planning on doing nothing. I was going to leave and go to heaven. That was my plan. I'm leaving here and go to heaven. Well, God had another plan. But uh, uh, sometimes that happens. Sometimes it don't. In this situation, it didn't. But there's some that's, that's still serving and worshiping. That's good. But God has a plan and a purpose for everyone. But their plan and their purpose is being worked out right there in the house. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying that everyone is going to go out, start a church, and do this and do that. Everybody, It's not made for everyone. Everybody don't have the heart to do it. Amen. And then sometimes God has to fix the heart and make it because I didn't have the heart to do it. Amen. But God can do anything. But when we submit ourselves... To support our sh the vision that the Lord that the Lord has given the shepherd, you get a supernatural anointing in a place that you really need. Maybe it's somebody you really in your family want to get saved. Maybe there's a healing that you need in your body. Yeah. Maybe it's some things that you've been asking God for, and that thing has been you've been asking for so long that it's growing gray whiskers on it. Amen. But we know that our Redeemer liveth, and He have heard our voice, and He's going to answer that prayer. Right. And it doesn't matter about how old you are, how young you are, how big you are, how skinny you are. Amen. God's word is right. Yes. And his word is good. Right. And he will bring, he will get glory out of your life and out of my life. Right. Amen. Ask Joseph. I mean, he was stoned in prison. All kind of stuff happened to that brother. Amen. He was, his brothers tore his, his coat off him, told his father he was dead. And man, talk about going through. 17 years. But he ended up in the king's palace. And Joseph said in his last days, he said, The Lord has been so good to me that he made me to forget all of my sorrows. Wow. Ain't that something? That is good. And that's what God will do when we just hold on and wait on him. Because sometime when we're going through some things and, 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 and we're, we're going, the Lord's preparing you or he's preparing a place for you before you get there. So these things happen because he's preparing a place and he has to prepare it before you get there. But there's another part of the equation. He's also preparing you to go to the place where he where he needs to take you. He's getting the, the junk out of you. Sometimes he's getting you, your attitude right. So sometimes, well, why this ain't happened to me yet? Why does it? Well, it's because your attitude is messed up. So it ain't that he can't give it to you, but if he give it to you, he knows what's going to happen. You're going to get all crazy and begin to lose your mind. So he wants you to get your attitude to the, your attitude right everything ain't the devil mm -hmm. we think it's the devil everything ain't the devil sometimes god's holding it up he's holding it up why because he's waiting on you to get it together mm -hmm. I, i'm helping somebody today mm -hmm. amen <laughs> the power of oneness success through the supernatural and inevitable mm -hmm. amen it's just the power of oneness um, Genesis 11, 1 through 8, it says, And the whole world was one, one in one language, in one speech. And it came to pass that they journeyed from the east, and they fought in the plain of the land of um, Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said to one another, Go, to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime, and they put for mortar. And they said, Go to let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach 
unto heavens and let us make us a name look at this what they say let us make ourselves a name let us make ourselves a name let us make ourselves famous let us um, uh, put ourselves like we are worthy to be anything so we're going to do it ourselves let us be scattered abroad upon the face of least well, it said, least we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth amen and the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men build amen and the lord said behold the people is one but look at this what he said and they have all they they have all one language and this they begin to do and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do it didn't say it was the will of god but because they were one because they had unity that there was the, the bible says the lord said that there's nothing that they will not be able to do even the worst thing or the best thing in their imagination they will accomplish it accomplish it because they were one so what did the lord do he came down he said i'm I, we got to go down and confound their language because they about to kill each other See, they didn't understand. They would have actually built this uh, bridge that they, or they was going to build this thing that they say they were going to build. They were actually, they, they would have got it done. Uh -huh. And they didn't understand the altitude, and they didn't understand how the air get thin at a certain point. You get to so many thousands of feet, and you pass out. They didn't understand that, but they were ready. They were about to kill themselves because they had a mind to do something. And then no matter what anybody said, they were going to do it because they were one. And because of that, the Lord came down and had to confuse their language. Amen. But it was for their good. It wasn't for their detriment, but it's for their good. And sometimes we, the Lord may allow some things to happen, and we may think, oh, my gosh, the devil is doing this devil. Stop saying that. Sometimes. If we stay focused, remember we talked about that at the beginning. Stay focused. Amen. Don't get confused. Amen. Don't allow yourself, amen, to um, uh, look at things and get, amen, and, uh, and get uh, distracted. But if we keep our eyes on the Lord, amen, and keep our eyes watching, we'll find out that it may be something, it may be just God. Yeah. Let's bring, here's the next uh, um, point I want to make. In order to have unity, there must not be any division or contention. Okay? So if we're going to have unity, the unity of the faith, I'm watching time here, uh, we can't have any division or contention. Right. And this, I, I had to speak this message because this is the beginning of a new year and, and we need to do things new. And, and as we do things new, we need to get all the old stuff out, all the things that we struggled with last year and all the things that we may have seen last year that happened. That's over. 22, 2022 is over. Now we're in a new year. We're in a new season. And now it's time for us to understand that we must be unified. Amen. If we get unified now, amen, ain't no telling where we're going to be in when 24 come in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If he delay is coming, amen, he allows us to see 24, amen, we will be a blessed, uh, even more of a blessed people so that the glory of the Lord will fill the earth right. even as the waters cover the sea, amen. So in order to have unity, we must not be, we must not have any division or contention. You can find that in 1 Corinthians 1 and 10 where it says, Now I beseech you, brother, Brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same what thing, and that there be no division among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Praise God. When there is one vision, one spirit, and one focus objective, God moves supernaturally on behalf of of his visionary and see the anointing flows down it flows from the head down and as he blessed the visionary you can't help but be blessed amen 
Hallelujah. And when there is unity and oneness in intent, purpose, and plan, it will allow the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost to operate in the visions. We don't want to just work in a vision, but we want the Holy Spirit to operate in the midst of us. We want to say, I, I, my, my thoughts, my ideals, my word, things that I would love to see, that we'll love to see happen. I want to see limbs grow. I want to see people who were sick be healed. I mean, not just tomorrow, not just a week later, but right away, man. See, those are the things that happen when there's unity. See, when, when, when faith is alive and there's enough faith in the house, amen, and everybody's saying the same thing and they're doing the same thing with the same mind, I want you to know that there's power. There's power in unity. There's power in the unity of the faith. Amen. We read in Acts, it says, Amen. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place and in one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it, was, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And it appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak as other, with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. And in this year, as we unify, we want to get to the place that we trust God and we are saying the same thing. We're speaking the same thing. We're loving one another. We're praying for one another. We're not listening to outside sources or voices or what we hear. We hear and we let it stay there. We don't bring it back, but we 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 focus in on what God is saying in the house, what He's saying through His visionaries, and He's He's connecting us together. I want you to say, I want you to know, Amen, that there's going to be a sound, Amen. Of a rushing mighty wind, amen, that suddenly comes as a rushing mighty wind and fill the house, amen. I'm looking for the Lord to fill the house. So I don't have time for uh, kindergarten stuff because a lot of people, they, 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 they major in minor things, amen. Kindergarten stuff, you know, I don't smoke, I don't drink, this one's cursing. Okay, that's baby stuff. Okay, let me just tell you, it's baby stuff. See, what we're looking for is, is past all of that stuff. Oh, this one said something about me. This one don't like me. That's baby stuff. That's kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade. It's time to graduate, to graduate school, yeah. amen, and get a degree in Christology, yeah. amen, come on, come on. And, get, and leave elementary where elementary. It was a good school teacher, amen. You learned some things, but now it's time to graduate. Yes. Yeah. Now it's time to stop looking at things and negatively and, and begin to, when you see negative, you bring it to life. Amen. You bring, you speak life into every dead situation in your life. I'm going to speak, I'm going to Hallelujah. speak life into Hallelujah. every dead thing. Amen. Yeah. That come my way in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going yeah. to speak life. Lord, Holy Spirit, give us wisdom. Give us understanding. Give us the courage to continue to speak life. And to every dead situation in, that comes before us. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. So, uh, we have a couple questions. It's getting a little late, but um, oh, we're on time. So, I only have four questions. Real, I don't think it's hard. So, let's go ahead. I'm going to ask the first question. And listen, thank you for being a part of the teaching. I, I pray that God bless you. I pray that you got something out of it. Amen. Because it came right from the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm only a vessel that's being used by him. Amen. And whatever he wants to say, whatever he puts in my spirit and my mind, I'll speak that thing. But listen, it's, it's not about me or my agenda, but it's all about him. All about him. So here, here's the first question. It says, uh, it is vitally important that the church has the vision and the spirit of the blank. All right. You finish filling it out. Proverbs 29 and 18. I gave you the answer, if you can remember. It is vitally important that the church has the vision 
and spirit of the what? Okay. Okay, give you a few more seconds. It's vitally important that the church has the vision of the vision and spirit of the what? Okay, Pastor, it's enough time so you can, yeah, so let's see if we have any answers out here. Okay, the shepherd, Elder Regina. Amen, the shepherd, thank you, Elder, amen. Anybody else? Anybody else? Amen, not right now, Bishop. Let me see if I can see anything. See anything on the on the she screen? Said, said shepherd or the leader? Uh, I didn't see that. Uh, 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 Brother Malone. Bro okay, Minister Malone said leader. Um, uh, you said elder said shepherd. No, elder said leader. Who else? She said leader and shepherd. Okay, she said shepherd and leader. Anybody else? Okay, very good, very good, very good. So, uh, um. It is vitally important that the church has the vision and, sh and spirit of the set man or the leader. Amen. Very good. Very good. Uh, next question. Uh, whenever you submit and support the shepherd's vision, a blank is released. A blank is released. Repeat. Whenever you submit and, su and support the shepherd's vision or the leader's vision, a blank is is released Okay, so what we got, whenever you submit and support the shepherd's vision, a blank is released. Okay, Anybody? You can read them. Elder Regina said a supernatural blessing. Amen. Elder Regina said supernatural blessing. And Minister Malone said a supernatural anointing. Minister Malone said supernatural anointing. Amen. Anybody else? Elder Regina meant, uh, she said, I meant anointing. <laughs> okay, she said she meant anointing. Amen. Thank you, Elder. God bless you. So, uh, that's okay. So, so, whenever you submit and support the shepherd's vision, a or the leader's vision, a supernatural anointing is released. Very good, everybody. Okay, the next question. One blank and one blank. One blank and one blank. It's at the beginning. You need the music? You can go ahead if you have it. It's right at the beginning. It's actually the title of the lesson. Almost. <laughs> one blank and one blank. Okay. Okay. Elder Regina said one vision and one spirit. Elder Regina, one vision and one spirit. Very good. Anybody else? Minister Malone said oneness. Minister Malone said oneness. Very good. Anyone else? Okay, very good. So, the answer is one spirit and one vision. Awesome. So, last last question, last question. In order to have unity, there must not be any blank or blank. In order to have unity, there must not be blank or blank.
In order to have unity, there must not be any blank or blank. You said you weren't going to put it up. Uh oh. The answers already came in. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so. Okay. Elder Regina said contention and division. Elder, Elder Regina said contention and division. Very good. Anybody Ms. else? Malone said division and contention. Amen. Miss <laughs> Malone said uh, division and contention. Amen. And the answer is drum roll division and contention. <laughs> Amen. Very good. That's that's the last question. Um, I, I pray that we come into the unity of the faith. Amen. And understanding that who who deserves God's grace? None of us. Amen. The Bible says in Ephesians, it says, Do by grace, for by grace are we saved through faith, and not of ourselves, but it's the gift of God, not of works. Not of works, at least any man might boast. Amen. So we got to understand and keep it in mind that his faith is, his grace, I say, is a gift. Amen. His grace is a gift to us all. And if you want to have the grace of God in your life and you want to know the Lord as your Savior, it's very simple. You repent, number one. You ask the Lord to come into your heart and make your heart his home. You repent. You believe, amen, and you have to speak it forth, amen. So you repent of your sins, and you you have to confess Jesus, who died on the cross, went into the grave, and he rose again on the third day just for you. The Bible says that if you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth, and believe it in your heart that God has raised Jesus up from the dead, the Bible says that you shall be saved. I always say the Bible because I don't want you to think it's something that I made up. But the scripture says, because of that, amen, out of your bellies will flow rivers of living water. Amen. And he that cometh to God is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. So if you ask the Lord to come into your heart, Amen. And you have given him your heart and you believe and you receive that. I want you to know that you are saved and you're part of the family of God. But I want you to know it don't stop there. Once we come to the Lord, it's important that we connect ourselves to a, a church body to, for what? To help you to grow, to help you to be strengthened, to teach you how to walk by faith teach you how to live a life of victory to strengthen you to be a help the church is so important and we don't take we take it for granted but the church helps us to stay focused helps us to stay strong encourages us to walk and keep fighting this good fight of faith amen so god bless you may heaven smile upon you Amen. And I look forward to seeing you guys again or seeing you guys and gals again. Amen. Soon. Um, please come visit us um, at 1505 East 260th Street on Sunday mornings. We're here every Wednesday. And there's going to be times I'm going to do little excerpts through the week. Amen. So you'll see those. It'll just be little 15 minute little excerpts or 20 minutes or 10, 10, 20, 15, 10, 15, 20 minutes. Amen. Just to encourage you through the week. Amen. But and, uh, otherwise, be blessed of the Lord and, and highly favored of God. And if I don't see you again on this side of glory, I'll see you up there. Amen. Glory to God. Have a blessed day. I love you all. God bless you.